A Los Angeles woman has filed a police report alleging Democratic Assemblyman Matt DeBobna had with her without consent four years ago, adding new allegations of UAL misconduct to those that led the politician to announce his resignation last week. He says her claims are false. Nancy Murat, 26, told The Times that when she was 22 and a recent college graduate, she spent time with DeBobna over two months in late 2013, primarily at his Encino apartment. At the time, DeBobna was running for assembly to represent the western San Fernando Valley. They had consensual on one occasion, but after that, Murat said she had multiple non-consensual UAL encounters with DeBobna that left her traumatized. Murat, who now works in commercial real estate, is one of three women interviewed by The Times who have made new allegations concerning DeBobna's behavior. These allegations are false and I'm confident that when all the facts are in, it will clearly show that these claims are not true, DeBobna told The Times. The assemblyman announced his resignation Friday, effective January 1st, after two women publicly accused him of harassment. Pamela Lopez, a Sacramento lobbyist, said Dubovna masturbated in front of her and asked her to touch his genitals at a 2016 party. Another woman, Jessica Yasbarker, alleged that Dubovna routinely made degrading comments about women and discussed his UAL exploits in the office. Dubovna has strongly denied the accusations. The Assembly Rules Committee has hired an outside investigator to look into the allegations against the Woodland Hills lawmaker, who is not married. Assemblyman Matt DeBobna resigned following UAL misconduct allegations. The other two women who spoke to the Times also described incidents that they claim occurred before DeBobna was elected to the Assembly in 2013, one when he supervised local field operations to help John F. Kerry's presidential campaign in 2004, and another when he was chief of staff for U.S. Rep. Brad Sherman D. Porter Ranch, a position he held from 2009 to 2013. Jen Kong said Dubovna was her supervisor in 2004 when, as an 18-year-old just out of high school, she worked on the Kerry campaign in a Pasadena field office. She alleged that Dubovna exposed his penis to her and asked her to touch or perform oral on him one day when they were out trying to raise money for the candidate. Kong offered to speak to the Assembly Rules Committee last week as part of its investigation into Dubovna's conduct. Carrie McFadden worked in Sherman's campaign office from 2010 to 2012. She said Dubovna, as the congressman's chief of staff in the district office, would regularly talk about his life during his frequent visits. She said he once offered her a raise if she could convince a UCLA student to have with him. Neither woman formally reported the incidents, saying they weren't sure how to do so at the time. I did not know who to call. I was only reporting to Matt. There's no one else that I would have talked to, said Kong, who is now 31 and working in healthcare. A big part of me thinks that had I been able to have that route, he wouldn't have been able to do this to other women. Dibabna, then a recent graduate of UCLA, appeared to take special interest in Kong during her summer job assisting the 2004 campaign, she said, asking her to go on weekend vacations and saying he had feelings for her. She said Dubovna once asked her if she was a virgin. I wanted to jump out of my skin, she said. Her older sister, Irene Kong, recalled that Kong said her male supervisor had taken interest in her and was asking her to hang out outside of work. One afternoon in summer 2004, Kong and Dubovna were out knocking on doors to raise money. As they were sitting in his parked car, Dubovna pulled out his erect penis and asked her what she thought of it, she said. He asked her if she would touch him or perform oral on him, she said. When she declined, she said, he asked if she would at least touch his arm, and then put his penis back in his pants. They finished their shift, but Kong didn't return to the office to work again after that day. Her friend Sarah Kwan said Kong told her at the time that Dubovna had exposed himself in the car. Kong said she had been too young to process what had happened to her. She said she's speaking up now because she feels she would be complicit by not saying anything. California Assemblyman accused of forcing lobbyists into bathroom and masturbating. McFadden said she frequently interacted with Dubovna when she worked in Sherman's campaign office, a job she began as a 23-year-old UCLA student in 2010. Dubovna was then chief of staff in the representative's district office in Sherman Oaks. McFadden said Dubovna would hang out in the campaign office and talk about which interns he thought were hot, or which women he had hooked up with in politics. In February 2012, McFadden was honored as the UCLA Bruins Democratic Club Alumnus of the Year. She said Dubovna attended the event and told her if she could convince the then-president of the club to have with him, he would get McFadden a raise. McFadden said the comment made her uneasy. 
I think at the time I was in shock, and I don't think I even directly responded, she said. Because McFadden worked for the campaign and not in the district office, Dubovna was not her boss and had no formal authority to adjust her pay. McFadden did not report the incident to her boss, but she confided in two friends. Both confirmed to the Times that McFadden told them about Dubovna's behavior, including the comment about the raise. Later, McFadden sent Dubovna an email, congratulating him on an endorsement in his campaign. She said she remained in occasional contact with him because she was being mindful of not burning any bridges. McFadden, now 31 and working at an election law firm in San Francisco, said she struggled with whether to tell her story publicly. There are still a lot of people from that campaign I consider friends, she said. Mirat was 22 years old and a recent UCLA graduate when she and Dubovna first spent time together alone in October 2013. Dibabna, 10 years her senior, was running for office for the first time, locked in a tight assembly race that he would win narrowly the next month. They met months earlier when her friend, Susanna Mejia, brought her to a party. Mejia, who was then an intern in Sherman's office, said she introduced them there. The first time they spent time together, Mirat said, she and Dibabna had at his apartment. She said that first encounter was consensual. When she met him subsequently, she told him in advance that she didn't want to have. They did not have every time they saw each other. But on multiple occasions Dubovna would remove her clothes as she tried to squirm away, Mirat said. She claimed she would tell him, no, or, stop before he had with her. Mirat said he would bite her neck and other parts of her body, leaving visible marks, and sometimes apologized for his actions. If you're saying, no, 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 and you stop and then you're quiet, you still never gave consent. That's something that I didn't understand, at first, Mirat said. I didn't understand that me stopping fighting was not consent. In her own words women of California politics tell their stories of UAL harassment and unwanted touching, Mirat said she grapples with why she returned to see him. He made it clear he was a powerful person with connections, someone who was important to know, and I naively believed nearly all of it, she said. One Saturday night, she said she insisted they meet at a restaurant, hoping to avoid having with Dubovna by being in a public place. She said Dubovna convinced her to go to Sherman's district office in Sherman Oaks, which was empty at the time, where they had non-consensual. She said she felt intensely violated after the encounter, and afterward took photos of bruising and bite marks on her neck. She showed the Times photographs she said were of those injuries metadata from the photos confirmed they were taken on the night Mirat alleged the encounter occurred. Mirat's friend, Kevin Shallard, confirmed she cancelled plans to attend a barbecue the next day, which she blamed on visible marks on her body that embarrassed her. She said she stopped returning to Bob calls a short time later, after his election to the assembly, and found the strength to abruptly end all communication with him. She told her friend, Mejia, at the time that the was not consensual. In an interview, Mejia confirmed that. In December 2013, Mirat also told Shallard, which he confirmed to the Times. Mira didn't file a police report at the time, she said, because I was still at a point where I could hardly talk about it. In June 2014, Mira sought advice from Shallard, who put her in touch with Kava Axelson, a student activist on campus rape at USC. She wanted to know what her options were as far as coming forward and as far as receiving some form of institutional support. Axelson told the Times. Axelson suggested she call a rape crisis center affiliated with a local hospital. The Times reviewed a summary of Mirat's June 16, 2014, call, placed seven months after Mirat stopped seeing Dubovna, which was released by the center with her authorization. Mirat asked questions about reporting a UAL assault and said she had been assaulted by Matthew Dubovna, according to the report. Several weeks ago, Mirat was connected to Lopez and Barker through mutual friends. She spoke to the Times before the women made their allegations public, then decided last week to go to the police. Dubovna's attorney, James Blatt, said they are cooperating with the investigation. I remember what it was like to not have a voice. Mirat said, It's not fair to not to speak out when you have the chance. Melanie.Mason at LawTimes.com Seema.Meta at LawTimes.com Follow at Melmason and at Blatt Seema on Twitter for the latest in California politics. Also Assemblyman Matt Dubovna resigned following UAL misconduct allegations Lawyer for lobbyist who accused Assemblyman Matt Dubovna of UAL misconduct seeks details about investigation California Assemblyman accused of forcing lobbyist into bathroom and masturbating.